Once upon a time, Martha Mulch wanted to do something significant, something special. So she enrolled in a school for specialists, studied hard, and graduated at the head of her class as a specialist in bricklaying. Nathan Tooley also had a dream, very similar to Martha's. In fact, he and Martha were dear friends. Their specialties brought them together. Tooley's specialty, by the way, was hole digging. They were inseparable, and soon they won world fame at their respective crafts. The two of them had the finest equipment. And worked a rigid schedule. Rising early in the morning, stopping only for tea and short rest breaks and continuing on into the night. They were such dedicated craftsmen that in a very short time, they lost all visual and audible contact. However, with the aid of closed circuit TV, they were able to continue their daily chats and exchange gossip about mutual friends. One such mutual friend was Charlie Freltip. He too was a specialist. Although Freltip never went to school, he nevertheless achieved greatness in the art of sky hooking, thanks to correspondence courses and determination. No one had the ability to hook the sky as skillfully as he. The only drawback in Freltip's profession was that it was new and unexplored. However, Freltip was determined to find a way for future generations. To plot a course around the world was his ambition. Well, one day Mulch and Thule decided they had had enough of Freltip. His skyhooking attempts were jeopardizing their careers. But like all dedicated pioneers, Freltip had to go on. One day, a man named Alfred B. Moon appeared. He specialized in harmonious rehabilitation. He explained to Thule that Freltip was important. But Mr. Thule, he explained, Freltip is forcing you to become creative. Why, digging in one direction was dull and mechanical. Improvising forced him to create, like an artist. Next, Alfred Moon went to see Martha, asking her if she was happy. And of course she was. This was her work, her life, her profession. But Moon pointed out that she was far, far too removed from life to identify. You need someone to communicate with. Someone with whom you can become involved. It is in this way that you can taste life, Martha. He also pointed out that Thule was too entrenched in his work to provide the necessary companionship. But there was someone. Charlie.
Tuli reminded Martha that her work was being neglected. <laughs> but she was obviously having too good a time, and Tuli left them in favor of an earache. In the days that followed, Tuli's digging reached a new low. It seemed that his shovel would be silenced forever. Martha, however, was certainly relating well. <laughs> then one night, Tuli's silent shovel sounded certain as it dug through the night. Martha and Charlie were quite confused and went to see if Tuli knew anything about the event. It seemed that he did. As luck would have it, Alfred Moon happened by once more. And after listening politely, reminded Tuli that Martha's behavior was merely an extension of her desire to communicate. She was merely reacting to his reaction, which was in reality a manifestation of an immense effort on his part to project his male masculinity, which in... Uh, Moon felt that perhaps Martha would be more approachable. So he mentioned that Tuli needed understanding, and throwing bricks was certainly no way to communicate. All you're doing, Martha, he explained, is forcing Tuli to prove himself. Poor Tuli is suffering greatly from lack of communication. As if by magic, Martha suddenly became aware of a most significant role in store for her. Because, as she so aptly put it, Moon was devastatingly handsome without his glasses. 